Uh, Your Majesty, uh, members of the, <coughs> excuse me, of the, uh, <coughs> sorry, I'm a bit nervous, so, of the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters and distinguished guests, uh, I'm deeply touched and honored to be awarded the Abel Prize. As you know, Abel was an incredible mathematician and he made very deep contributions in the very short years in which he was active. Uh, it, it's a double honor for me to share the prize with John Nash. Uh, I've admired his work for many, many years. I have enormous admiration for him. And I'm also very honored to, to be among the previous winners of the Abel Prize. Um, the subject of the award, nonlinear partial differential equations, in fact, Professor Rognes has already described how such equations enter in mathematical models in many fields of science, in particular physics, but also many other fields of science. So, um, and as you know, mathematics is a very alive, a very active, vibrant field. And, uh, when, whenever people solve problems, have ideas, it always leads to new problems and new conjectures, new ideas. It's, it's something really incredible, something wonderful about the subject. Uh, also, unlike many other sciences, something, once something is proved in mathematics, it's proved forever. It's not as though theories change and then something is disproved and something else is proved. Something that's proved is proved. It just stays proved. Uh, you may ask, how did I get into mathematics? Well, I, I went to a very good high school. It was during the Depression. And at that time, to be a high school teacher was a very good job. And uh, so I had excellent teachers. And in particular, the best, my favorite subjects were mathematics, in particular geometry and physics. And in fact, the physics teacher actually had a PhD, something unusual for a high school teacher. And uh, I planned then, I was so t taken with physics, I had no idea that mathematics was an active field, and I decided I would like to be a physicist. So it, at university, this was at McGill University in Montreal, I studied, majored in mathematics and physics, and I graduated just at the end of the Second World War. And then during that summer, I had a job at the National Research Council, and it was involved with a, atomic research. And working there was also a son of Richard Courant, I'll say more about him, and also his wife. He had recently married a, a young woman from Montreal whom I knew. She was working there too. And one day she said, they're going for a weekend to New York to visit Courant, and I asked her to ask him if he could recommend some place where I might study physics, do graduate work in physics. Well, she came back and she said, he suggests you might come to New York, where he was, New York University, and perhaps get a master's degree in mathematics and then go on to study physics. So when I went down for an interview. I was offered an assistantship. And in the fall of 1945, I arrived in New York um, and I became a graduate student in mathematics, and I spent my whole life there, my whole career there. I just never left. I was always at New York University, so, which is somewhat unusual to, to stay in one place. Uh, Richard Courant had been the head of a very famous mathematics institute in Göttingen, Germany, and when the fascists came to power, he was kicked out, and then New York University offered him to come and set up a graduate mathematics department, which he did. So that was around 1935 or six. And at that time, there were, there were very few graduate students. In fact, very few until the war ended. And then when I arrived, there were a small group which then grew. And I must say that group was a very striking group of students, very talented young people a number of whom became very well-known mathematicians. And uh, Courant did something unusual. 
Uh, usually when you get a PhD in mathematics at an American university, you're, you then move, take a job at some other university. But Courant kept the best students at New York University, which was not, simply not the, the usual things. So I'm grateful to a number of people who helped shape my mathematical career. First there was James Stoker, who was my thesis advisor, but primarily there was Kurt Friedrichs, who really I consider my main mentor, my sensei, as the Japanese would say. Uh, he had been a student of Courant at Göttingen. He came to New York several years after, Göttingen, after Courant came, and among other things, he instilled in me a, a love for inequalities. This is not financial inequality as we are faced with today, but mathematical inequalities. And uh, so I learned an enormous amount from him. Also, I learned a lot from Peter Lax, who was a graduate student at the time, and he received the Abel Prize uh, in 2005. And um, I should say much of my work has been joint work. Almost 90% of my papers are joint papers. And for me, it's been an enormous pleasure working with other people. And I always recommend to young people to get involved and collaborate with others. It's a, a wonderful experience. Uh, I would like to mention one of my collaborators. This is Shmuel Agman who is a very original and deep mathematician. I learned a lot from him. Uh, I would love to mention other collaborators, but time is limited, so I won't. Uh, I also learned a lot from graduate students. I had 45, and some of them became collaborators. And uh, mathematicians really form a wonderful family, absolutely marvelous family, as it was mentioned in the movie. And, um, some months ago, uh, at a reception, I was talking with the wife of a mathematician, and she spoke about their daughter, and she asked me if I could introduce some young mathematician to her. Apparently, I have that ability. <laughs> the, uh, I asked how old she was, she's 29, and what does she do? She's a lawyer. And I said, well, surely she meets young lawyers. And she said, yes but I would like her to marry a mathematician <laughs> because they're such nice people. <laughs> Indeed, I think they are very nice people. <clears throat> uh, on the other hand, I'd like to tell a different story. I once read an article in the New Yorker magazine about the conductor and composer Andre Previn. I was very charmed by this article and I was charmed by him. And I told my wife, read, read this article, read about him, I think you will like him. So she read it, and I said, what was your reaction? What did you think of him? Did you like him? And she said, no, he's just like a mathematician. <laughs> so in conclusion, I'd, li I'd like again to thank very much, oh, first I must remember to thank my family and my companion for their patience and tolerance over these many years. And finally, I, my very warm thanks again to the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters, to the Abel Foundation, and the Abel Prize Committee for this really wonderful honor. Thank you all.